Hi everyone, I am back with another video and today my video will be about how I stay motivated and how I balance my school and personal life. Today I do have notes that I'm going to be reading off of similar to like my introduction video because I want to cover everything. A lot of people voted for this one, like all age groups, and I don't want to just sit here and lie to you guys and be like, oh, I'm going to tell you how to fix your life and like make it perfect and you'll never stress again. Like that's, that's bull. Like anyone who tells you that, it's fake. So. I'm just gonna be giving you some things that should help you get through it, basically. So, um, so the stuff we'll be covering is gonna be mental health stunting motivation to do work, hacks for days you just can't get through, boundaries and goals and how to stick to them. So, um, you know, mental health and like depression, those things are kind of like, not necessarily always in our control. Like, yeah, sure, there's medication and therapy, but I can't just like tell you that like, oh, I'll be able to like change that for you. That's, that's mental illness. Like that's something that we all can't necessarily control. But like for me, what I've noticed is I have to like basically be my own rock. I think that's what was like the game changer for me is I made myself who I had to depend on because codependency, like I get it. Like I still do it with like a lot of things, but like for like general life, I try to stick to myself. And I know that may like sound like the wrong advice. Like, oh, like you should just be alone. Like, no, 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 you should have friends. You should have people that support you. But you also need to be able to support yourself because I realized when I made myself the rock, I started wanting to do things for myself. I wanted to help myself. Like it was like, not like a split personality disorder, but like my low self like could get help from like my better self, if you, that makes sense. And so it's like things like when you wake up in the morning, like I'm sure some of you've dealt with this where you wake up and like maybe you're having a happy day, right? Like maybe you're having a good day. And like maybe halfway through the day, you start realizing, oh shoot, I'm, it's gonna get bad again. Because obviously if you're happy, it's gonna get bad again, right? And I think that was what like always made me fall into it again is because I, I, I manifested it for myself. I made myself unhappy by saying, oh, it's gonna happen again. And always like being anxious that it's gonna happen again. And I think like one of the biggest things that helped me stop doing that was I had to, every time that I was happy, I couldn't think about what bad could come. I had to think about what good will come from this. And when I did get like hit those rock bottom moments or if I like did have a hard time, I was, I was able to pull myself back out because I knew, hey, I'll be happy again. <laughs> I changed it instead of thinking, you know, I'm happy, I'm gonna be upset again. Well, I'm down, obviously I'm gonna be happy again one day because it, life's a roller coaster. You're always gonna have all these different emotions. You're all supposed to feel them. Like we're not supposed to be happy all the time. It's okay to feel sad. Like it's good to feel that. So I started thinking of it as more of like a feeling and less of like forever. Like it's, it's a moment. It's not just your whole life is to be sad. And so that's what made me happier. And I also, when, I'm, when I am happy, I try to like really hold on to the moment. Like my friends and everyone make fun of me. I take a lot of pictures of like, you know, like my boyfriend or my friends. And like a lot of them don't understand why. And for me, it's cause like, well, I want to treasure this moment. I want to be able to look back on it and be like, you know, like this was a good day. This was good for me. So that's what's been really helpful for my overall like wellness, you might want to call it. And then to get into like some hacks for the days that we just can't get through, you know, depression, like I said, I can't fix that. Um, but like sulking in your bed, and stuff like that. There are ways I've learned for myself, I'm not gonna say I, that it will work for you, but for me, I've found ways that will get me out of bed. So, like, some people tell you to do one thing for yourself a day, like something that makes you happy, right? Well, that didn't work for me long-term because I would get so, I would do that one thing and then I would get so anxious about the things I haven't done productive for myself, I would just spiral back into the place I was before. And so, something I've changed about that is now I do one thing that's productive for myself. Like I see it as myself doing a favor for future me. Like I think I separate like present me, future me. And I do it because I'm like, okay, well future me will thank me later. So maybe you have like eight things on a list that you need to finish. You need to finish all of them. Just do one. And like, even if you don't finish all eight, it's okay because you did one and like you're showing growth that way. Like you're gonna get back on top of it. And the other thing I've noticed is over time as I started doing this, I started doing more on the list. So I do one thing. I'm like, well, I might as well do the other thing. And I just kept going. And so that's what I finally got to. And I think that's why it's one of the best pieces of advice that I've ever got and that I'm giving right now. Um, and yes, obviously do stuff for yourself. Obviously you should pamper yourself. You should 
you know, make yourself a good breakfast in the morning. I love breakfast. And so when I'm down, like if I make myself some pancakes or my mom does, I'm like set for the day. I'm just super pumped. So yeah, obviously try to do something for yourself, but I really prioritize the advice of doing one thing productive for yourself. And that's what kind of gets you going and motivated again, because when you do something that isn't necessarily the wants for yourself, but the needs, you're fulfilling a need. And that's way more, how do I say it? Like fulfilling than fulfilling your wants. So to get into my, uh, there's this, yep, there it is, okay. So um, like there's, I use, okay, I don't know how to phrase this. <laughs> so, when I am stressed, I like to plan. And I, a, lot of, a lot of people I know actually like to do that. Like they realize they like to plan because, and you know, you call it, call it control issues, whatever you want, but I do have control issues like to a degree. And I think that planning for me helps me like kind of settle down because like, oh, obviously I'll cross off the list. And that's actually a hack in itself is making a plan for yourself. You're gonna want to cross those off the list. Like you're gonna wanna make, get rid of them off the list. It's kind of like a mental thing. But here's the thing with that you need to reassure yourself that if you don't cross the things off the list, that you're still worthy and that you're still good enough. Like I, I used to attach myself to my list. If I didn't complete all of it on time, exactly how I planned it, it was just the end of the world for me. And so that's what you have to make sure that you're able, like you're mentally able to like handle that and do that. And if you are, this thing I've been using lately, Notion, it kind of blew up on TikTok a while ago when we were all doing online learning. And so students, we get it for free. So if you're like a student like me and you're watching this, I definitely recommend it. Um, but even if you're an adult, this is super handy because it's like you basically get to make spreadsheets for all your different aspects of your life. So I like sectioned it out. Like I have a school life, personal life, career, and I have all these things that I get to plan. And even if I don't cross them off the list, I feel like, like, like a, like a weight's been lifted off me because I don't just have to store all that shit in my head. I can put it out there. I can put it on something and it helps me get through it. And with Notion, like you get to like decorate it. Like for those of you that just want to have fun with your notes and it's just really nice. And I've, on, I've honestly just stayed more on track with it. Now, but I will be honest with you guys though. Like I'm not going to just say like, I'm doing great all the time. Like, you know, with school starting in person again, it's been really weird, the adjustment. And so like these ta these hacks that I'm giving you, these tips, like they work for me to a degree, but I'll still go into those like places, you know, that was like, um, I can't get out of bed in the day, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. And so like, you're not crazy for it. You're, like, you're not like worse than me. You're not like, <laughs> you're not a bad person for it basically because you're gonna get back on top. That's what the reassuring thing is. You're gonna get back on top and you just have to help yourself. So, Here's one really important thing though that I really want to bring up is boundaries. So when I was at my worst, it was when I was yeah. surround like I was my center of my life was my friends. Like I put my friends in the center and myself was out of it. And so when you don't put yourself as your priority, how are you supposed to take care of yourself when you're down? Because you make your friends your priority, not your friends won't always reciprocate that. You know, if you make them the center of attention all the time, they're not gonna realize it, realize they should reciprocate that. And so something that really helped me is obviously keep your friends close, like the ones that really care. But you need to be able to say no. Like I used to never be able to say no to my friends. If they asked me out and like to like hang out, I could not say no to them. Even if I just having a really bad day or like they they get mad at you if you don't text back fast enough. Screw that. If somebody is mad at you for not texting back fast enough or not calling back fast enough, unless it's an emergency, you have no reason to feel bad because it like we our generation has been taught to think that we're just supposed to be at each other's beck and call, but that's not how it's supposed to be. Like we have our own lives, so if I don't text you back for two days, I don't want you taking it personal. It's I'm I'm having my own life. I'm living my own life. <laughs> like unless it's an emergency, which you should be calling me for or you know, blowing me up a little bit more about, then sure. But even then, is it my job to handle your emergencies? No, it is not. And that's what you have to teach yourself. It's hard. I was a people pleaser. I'm sure a lot of you guys are people pleasers. And so it's really hard to feel like, oh, is that, are you sure that's okay? No, it's okay to do that. So um, that's like something that's really important to me. And saying no, saying no is huge because it's, what's honestly, it was weird for me the first few times I started doing this is when my, I started saying no to my friends, they were like, 
a little like offended, like shocked, like as if it wasn't like morally right for me to do so. And I'm like, well, you know, you let other people say no to you. You're just not used to it yet. And so, I mean, I still have my group of friends. I still have my close group of friends, but they also know that I have boundaries now. So it's different than what I where I was before. And this also goes for like, like, you know, I'm talking about how people don't say enough about like how they feel, right? This goes vice versa. So if you're, if you don't want to tell your friends what's going on, if you don't want to put it on them, like in your head, put it on them, but also just you want to keep something personal, you owe nobody your private information. And you also can't tell people your private information. You can, like, if you have friends, you can tell them that, like, don't feel guilty for it. Because like a lot of us, like, I think we go through so much and like, we don't have a support system because we don't let ourselves have a support system. We don't think we're worthy of it. And that just goes back to self-love. Like, how are you supposed to be loved if you can't love yourself, right? So, and that sounds like very like corny and like very overdone, right? But it's true because if you don't want yourself to succeed, if you don't want yourself to, you know, to be at the top and if you don't love yourself, there's no way that somebody can give that to you without doing that. So, I think I've covered a lot of what I need to cover. I think there is, oh, yep, one more thing, goals and how to stick to them. So, part of this is the list thing. The list helped me stick to my goals, but another thing is law of attraction, and a lot of you guys that follow me know that I'm very in tune with my spirituality, and that was also something that really helped my mental health, but I also don't like to push any religion or spirituality on anybody. I think that you can, you know, up, like maintain wellness without going down a, a more say like I guess we'll just call it a spiritual path like you can still like maintain that wellness and happiness so um that did help me though and part of this though is law of attraction this is more of a scientific thing I mean a lot of actors use this and um the way I do it though for my goals is I write it down and I write down everything that I want as if I already have it and I kind of think about it like I know that sounds funny but like I think about it like I think about how that would look how that would feel how I would feel and every time I um, I have to say this like it's really weird but every time I imagine I want something like in my head it does happen like the writing thing yes it helps like for sure but the when I imagine it it's like it just it's bound to happen I don't know why it just does and I don't wish bad on anybody that's the other thing I don't abuse that like power because honestly you'll just get karma back on you in my opinion this is my opinion um, I use it for my own success because I, I, that's fair. If you want yourself to succeed, you should be able to see it. You need to imagine yourself because if you don't believe it's possible, then it can't be possible. <laughs> you need to believe in yourself. So I do that and I also write it down because I want to be able to refer back to it. So I focus on one thing out of all the things I wrote down that I want to have. And when I focus on one thing, I put all my energy into it. And when I do that, it's the most success comes from it because you're not separating it everywhere. Like multitasking is good to a degree, <laughs> to a degree, because if you can't put enough energy into any of them, then what are you doing? Because some people see it as focusing one thing is wasting time. I, on the contrary, believe that multitasking can do the same thing. So that is my opinion on it all. And one more thing I forgot to mention when I was talking about the school stuff and like, you know, like um, hacks, like Notion, like, so, oh, by the way, I'll put that in the description box for you guys to like tap and like, you know, if you want to go make your own profile and stuff. But um, the other thing is, I realized while I was in school is I used to do, I like, okay, if when you get depressed, sometimes you get late work and you get old work, right? If your teacher accepts late work, I used to just do the either oldest or the newest assignment and think that was gonna fix it. Um, until I realized it wasn't making my grade go up. And then I looked at it and I thought, okay, <laughs> that was 10 points. This other assignment I left behind is 100 you're gonna wanna do the one with the most points because the one with the most points is gonna be the one to bring your grade up the most. And yes, I obviously, I should be telling you guys, do it all. Okay, but do we always have time to do it all? No, we don't. So I say prioritize the one with the most points, look into it. Like if you have school loop or whatever, ask your teacher which one has more points, stuff like that, it will change, it will change everything. It will make you far less stressed than doing so like let's say five assignments versus one. So that is my tip to you guys. Um, I think that I've covered everything. I am pretty sure. Yep, yep. All right, yeah, I have. 
So um, I don't know if this is exactly what you guys are looking for. I just didn't want to come off too preachy as well. For people, like when people tell me just be happy or like things like that, it makes me really upset. Like I just get so angry. I'm like, how could you tell me that just to be happy? And like, that's not really possible. Um, and I get it. Like, I also even get it if you just blow this video off too. Like, wow, she's like, you know, like, how am I supposed to do that? I get it. But I think that maybe just try to go into it with an open mind of what I just told you guys. So um, I tried my best. I hope you guys like this video. Um, my next video will be my top three breakfasts. I originally said it would be coming out on the 27th. I'm not sure about that anymore because I don't have time to record my breakfasts on school days, only on the weekends. So it might be postponed, but I will be updating that on my Instagram which brings me to, um, I'll be putting my social medias at the below, below, um, in the description box today, not as a marquee, because I just, it's one clip of a video, I wasn't, I'm not really gonna edit it today, so all of my, um, sorry, social medias will be in my description box, and thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys whenever I see you guys, <laughs> bye!